My name's Dawn Daly. I'm a senior scientist with Gary NZ based in Canterbury, but for the last 10 or so years have been involved in research projects around wintering and also farm system design in Southland and South Otago. And currently I'm leading the farm systems implementation at the Southern Dairy Hub and a couple of projects relating to water beet feeding. So today in my session, what I'm gonna to try to do is bring together some of the key messages that you've heard from Nick and Helen in relation to good management practice and um, animal welfare, and talk about um, the importance of crop paddock setup and contingency plans for adverse weather. And partway through, I'm gonna flick over to Olivia and she's going to um, give us some perspective from um, a mixed livestock um, point of view. So next slide, please. So why is it important that we have uh, paddock grazing plans? Well, first of all, it helps to set wintering expectations. And if you can do this with your team, it means that everybody's on the same page and they know what success is going to look like for your farm. It also helps the team to understand the why that you do things in a particular way on your farm. So we know there's lots of different systems out there and everybody does things slightly differently. So understanding the why for your farm means that they'll be in a better position to make informed decisions uh, if things are going off plan. Also by having individual paddock grazing plans, you can identify and highlight the risks of specific paddocks. So if I think about the Southern Dairy Hub, we winter on both our upper terrace and also on our lower flats. We know that the soil type on our lower um, terrace or a lot of the flats is heavier. We have a number of paddocks with critical source areas and also we have a um, waterway that runs through the middle. So those paddocks have quite different risks in terms of implementation of grazing compared with the ones on our upper terrace. The other thing with having these paddock grazing plans is that it allows you to discuss and plan for the adverse weather events and think about some of those things that Helen's just highlighted. Um, in relation to animal welfare. And I guess the, the overall objective is really looking at maximising the chances of achieving your spring calving and lambing targets. So what I'm going to um, go through, next slide, thanks Hamish, is um, just the key factors to consider in the plan. And it's really around bringing together the things that Nick and Helen have talked about onto, um, into a, a concise form and um, sharing it with the team or developing it with the team. So all of what I'm going to talk about is in the recently released break fed wintering resource. Um, it's an update of our successful crop and pasture wintering material that's been out there previously. So in terms of the plan, thinking about um, your critical source areas and waterways, um, putting them in on your, on your map. Um, then with that, you can look at your grazing direction and how you can utilise any shelter, where your bales are going to be placed, how you're going to manage your portable troughs and alongside the back fencing. And then also looking at what access points you've got to the paddock and do you have specific access points for people, animals and vehicles. So we'll just move on and look at what the resources are that you need to develop this plan. So there's not actually a lot of resource required. Um, either a farm map, or um, within the break fed wintering guide, there are some resource templates that you can use if you don't have a farm map. Uh, you need some um, writing material, pens or pencils, the farm team and some dedicated time. So what you may choose to do is if you've got a number of um, paddocks on your farm and you've got a, a few in your team, maybe give each member of the team um, a paddock to go away and think, do the initial plan for and then come back as a group and decide or and discuss what um, everybody's come up with. One of the things that we've found valuable at the Southern Dairy Hub is using um, Google Maps over our, our um, farm map and from there we can pick up um, sometimes some more subtle uh, critical source areas that we might need to deal with. They might not be wet when they're in grass, but um, potentially can be a challenge um, when they're in crop. 
So yeah, just get your farm team involved and um, start documenting um, how you're planning on grazing those paddocks. Next slide, thanks Hamish. The other thing with um, developing those um, paddock plans is thinking about your um, how that fits with your adverse weather contingency plan. So Helen's highlighted some of these um, aspects already. So from the animal welfare perspective, the plan needs to um, consider um, access to shelter. So where have you got those opportunities? What does the um, your lying surface look like? And um, also the access to feed. So um, and potentially having additional feed available for periods of adverse events. From an environmental perspective, we need to take into consideration um, your soil type and what that looks like after two or three days of, of heavy rain and wet weather. Looking at any areas um, that may become, become larger risk in terms of runoff into um, surface waterways and in particular any flooding risk that there might be as well. And the third area for our contingency plan to consider is around people and safety. So having developed the plan, um, is everybody on board with it and how easy is it to implement uh, when that event may arise? How can you keep your people safe and um, being able to access the, the paddocks and the animals through that period of time? And for snow events, keeping um, particularly animals safe if we lose power during that event. So we'll just move on and look at some of the uh, factors or things that you consider in terms of an adverse plan for cattle. So thanks Hamish. So in terms of contingency plan um, for cattle, some of the options, well initially we need to think about in the feed budgeting process, um, having that additional feed on hand for that, that period of time. So recommendation is um, having an extra 10% there. Uh, looking at options to increase the area available through that, that adverse event. So that might be by um, giving an extra break of, of crop. We need to be mindful um, with fodder beet and um, depending on what the allocation level is, that that may not be fe a feasible option um, without risking uh, animal health issues. However, there may be instances where actually taking your back fence um, further away from the, the um, crop phase may allow the animals um, to access some drier areas that they've already been through and give them more space to spread out and find those, those better areas. When you're developing your um, paddock grazing plan, looking at um, is there opportunity to save crop in a drier, lower risk part of the paddock, maybe a week's worth of feed there that you can bring animals back to um, if necessary. Or as I mentioned earlier, what we look at at the Southern Dairy Hub is the opportunity to bring animals off our heavier soils um, onto drier, lower risk paddocks up on the upper terrace. Uh, if you're looking at out of paddock options, there might be opportunity to stand off in um, laneways or yards or some rough uh, grass areas, but it's important to remember that cows don't um, particularly, or animals don't particularly like lying on hard uh, concrete surfaces, so that's really a short term solution. And there are some um, maybe opportunity to use some safe tree blocks. When I say safe tree blocks, probably not a good idea to have your pregnant animals in um, areas with microcarpa, but there might be some pine plantations you can use. So now I'm going to hand over to Olivia, who's going to go through um, what you might need to consider differently from a sheep perspective. Thanks for that, Dawn. Yeah, some of those cattle options, obviously, guys, can be used, but for other livestock, including sheep and deer, there might be some other options that you haven't thought of. And I'm just going to go through some of them for you to consider. So getting livestock to sheltered areas with water, you may be able to consider a grass runoff paddock when the weather is foul and have other options like utilising grain and sheet nuts while on those areas if it's going to be for an extended period of time to make sure you can maximise shelter. Again, you can use those lower risk dry paddocks as well. You may consider larger breaks or day breaks and I know a number of people are doing that now as well. From a deer perspective, 
deer require bigger breaks than cattle and some deer farmers have been giving deer the whole paddock rather than strip grazing ensuring that that critical source area is well protected. The back fencing of deer can increase stress which can result in fence pacing so it's best to probably avoid that if possible but each situation again is going to be different. You look at prioritising your stock classes so body condition scoring at scanning could be an option and look at transferring lighter animals to grass and supplement. You could be looking at doing some of this now as well. If lambing dates are split, ensure that you feed stock based on their lambing and calving dates. And if you winter shear, and I'm sure I don't need to tell you, but the shearing increases feed demand and freshly shorn sheep are at higher risk in bad weather. So make sure that you're considering the use of cover combs um, to reduce that risk. Lifters may be needed as well, depending on the season. And reduce that risk by just shearing one full shed at a time and having a three day gap between, especially if that weather is really unpredictable. So that pretty much covers it there, Dawn. So I'll just head back to you. Thanks for that, um, Olivia. So just a few other factors to consider in terms of your adverse um, weather plan. Uh, does uh, all the team know when and how to implement that plan. That's really important if um, you're the maybe the, the key decision maker and you're going to be off farm for a period of time. So having some clear triggers as to when that plan is enacted um, is really important. We need to consider the crop type um, that the animals are grazing as well and can you keep feeding it during the adverse weather event. This is particularly important for fodder beet where we know it's really important that animals are transitioned onto, onto the crop and have a consistent diet. So if you're pulling them off um, and they're off for more than a couple of days, then you might, you would need to have um, some retransitioning um, factored into your plan or an alternative might be to have some lifted fodder beak that you can give them in that um, outer paddock area so they stay on that diet through that period. Thinking about um, the impact of a decreased uh, feed utilisation during those adverse events on intake and um, how you're going to manage making sure that your animals are getting enough uh, feed through that period of time. And as I've mentioned previously, thinking about your access in and out of paddocks um, for stock and people. If you do have to move your stock out um, and maybe the, the gateway is not looking the best, are there options to drop fences and move them out over a bigger area? We acknowledge that um, it's pretty difficult to completely mitigate the conditions, but by having a plan, you can definitely look at options to minimise the impact. So just in terms of um, finishing up, by having sitting down, taking some time and developing these plans, it's a really great opportunity to set clear expectations around what success looks like for wintering on your property. By involving the team in the process, they can understand the why behind um, the activities and tasks that they're going out and doing on a daily basis and why it might be different between um, paddocks on the property. I'd encourage you to steal with pride um, any ideas from your farming colleagues as um, Helen mentioned, um, people do have lots of really good ideas and are doing things differently. So just look, just talk to your neighbours and, and others and um, find out what they're doing, especially in terms of the adverse weather. And I guess really um, encourage that doing something is better than doing nothing. And real value in that plan um, and everybody being on the same page at the start of winter. So just want to finish off by, with a quote from um, Napoleon that says, plan your work and work your plan.